Stimba, or Stakeholders in Methyl Bromide Reduction, is, as its name suggests, a group seeking alternatives to the use of methyl bromide. They've been investing in research with this aim since 2008. To date, over $22 million has been spent across a number of programmes, funded by levies from the forest industry and topped up by various government agencies. But even before the research could be done, there was some clever science needed. And that was provided by Plant and Food Research. Ian Gear from Stimba explains. The forest industry relies on exporting logs. So to get those logs into the markets, China and India particularly, our largest trading partners, we need to treat them to ensure that they are free of unwanted insects. For export logs, we have a very limited range of possibilities and consequently, we do need to future-proof the industry. Methyl bromide is one of two fumigants that we use and because it is out of favour internationally, it is an ozone-depleting substance, so hence we are obligated to seek alternatives and we are doing just that. The big problem that we've faced is that two of the insects that are of interest to our trading partners are bark beetles and they live their life underneath the bark of trees. So in order to do the research that we need and develop efficacy data sets, that is how effective is the treatment that we're looking at, we needed to be able to breed these insects in very large numbers and they have to be of known health status, age and physiological state. Over the last four years, we've been focusing very much on a product called ethane dinitrile, EDN for short, and that is the only truly promising fumigant that we have. We undertook some initial experimentation, and from there we opened up the exploration further, and hence we needed these insects, the two bark beetles in particular, in very, very large numbers. Stimber asked us to develop a method to produce the numbers of beetles needed to do really good replicated trials because the Ministry for Primary Industries needs very solid evidence of the effectiveness of fumigation schedules. But to be able to do that and produce the number of insects required, we needed to develop a breakthrough rearing methodology. And this is what Graham Clare has managed to do. Graham and others in the rearing unit have years of experience in developing insect rearing methodologies that we can use for other pests and other incursions. So it's a very handy skill to have. We've got a, a specialised facility here that was purpose-built to be able to do that, and we have some specialist staff who have achieved a lot in terms of insect rearing. The main thing we had to do here was establish a colony in the lab from the wild. So we had to get adults. So we, we set up attracting traps in the wild, the adults were caught live and we bring them into the, into the uh, lab. Then the next thing is to get them to mate. And then we obviously have to come up with a system where they can lay eggs. So we call this the layered phloem sandwich. And basically it's strips of phloem and they're basically put on pieces of plastic, layered together, and you put the adults in there and they think it's one solid piece. And they burrow in and do their things, lay their eggs, we developed a diet, we dried the bark phloem, ground it up into a powder, and then of course you have to get the mold inhibitors and vitamin mixes right. We actually make holes in the diet and add an, each, an egg to each hole, and we'd, we'd cover it over with the diet. And so the egg being embedded into the diet, the larvae would then hatch and then spread out through the diet. What you get in here is you get pupae come through, and then the adult emerges, and the adult feeds on the diet, and the system starts fresh. So you have generation after generation going on. What we've got is a bag here, and there's a billet in here, and it's waxed on top. Well, basically we had to come up with a method for pumps north to infest insects and logs that was reliable and worked every time. We roll up a huge long paper towel log, wet it so it's soaking wet, basically wrap it around the bottom of the log so it's like a paper towel log, then we put adults, 15 pairs, 15 males, 15 females, on top of here. Then we basically puff the bag up, fill it full of air, and twist tie it off, 
with a twist tie. And then that uh, keeps it moist, gives them plenty of oxygen in here, air, and they go through and they develop on the logs. And we get a pretty well standard numbers of insects per log, roughly 300 insects per log, which is a really good number. So when you strip this off in uh, three months' time, they'll be uh, full of adults, but it depends on what stage you want. So you've got the larval stages, and you've got the pupa, and the adults, so they could take it through to the larval stage, they could strip it and get all larvae out, but of course they're fumigating before they do, the, before they strip. So they're taking that log, putting it in a fumigation chamber, treating either larvae, pupae, or adults, or a mixture of all three. At the moment, we are just in the concluding phases over the next four months or so, where we will have developed an efficacy data set for methyl bromide, and that significantly shows us that we can reduce the treatment rates that the product applied to the logs. We can reduce the treatment rate for methyl bromide from what we are using at the moment, very significantly. And we also have an efficacy data set coming very shortly which shows that EDN is very successful at controlling the insects that we're concerned with. So with those two data sets, we will be arming MPI to go and talk with the Chinese and their Indian counterparts, and both those governments know that this data is coming. They have been informed, and we've had initial conversations. And we will take that data to them, and then we need to, as part of that process, allow them to evaluate the data before they accept the recommendations that are coming out of that science. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.